Bismillah. In the past, despite the warning of his family, a man married a very beautiful woman he met in the forest. He had no idea it was an ogress. During the day, she knitted the bread, rallied the couscous, and went about housework like other women. But at night, she would sneak into the uncle's yule where the shepherds locked up their flocks and devoured a sheep. The men of the tribe, very worried, gathered to find a solution to these disappearances. The father of the ogress's husband proposed to keep an eye on the herd tonight. I will wrap myself in my black jalaba and hide in the middle of the sheep. The ogress, who did not know that his stepfather was in the enclosure, slipped as usual to satiate himself on the fattest sheep. In the dark, she grabbed the old man who shouted, Let me go, you filthy creature, let go of me. She withdrew her hands, strumming. But it's only me, your daughter-in-law. I heard a lamb bleating and came to see if there was a thief. The old man pretended to believe. So much he was afraid and at daybreak he alerted his son. Miss Fortune, your wife is an ogress. Let's run away while there is still time. When she has decimated our herds, she will attack us. The son protested. It's impossible. She gave me a daughter. She can't be an ogress. As the man did not want to hear anything, his people left him. They moved, leaving him his share of animals, sheep, cows, horses. He was left alone with his wife and little daughter. Alas, as the days went by, its heart shrank, blinded by his love for his wife. He always found an excuse for the disappearance. He said to himself that the animals escaped from the enclosure or that the jackal devoured them. One day, he returned from the fields earlier and in horror, he discovered his wife, her head buried in the bowls of a filly. Before she saw him, he placed his daughter on his shoulders and fled at full speed. Suddenly, as he caught in his breath, his little daughter grabbed him by the ears and said to him, mm, Oh, daddy, I'm hungry and I will nibble on your beautiful ears. What? My own shield is an ogress? Without hesitation, he rushed her into the deep river and continued on his way. But the ogress was already chasing after him. He almost caught up with even the presence of a large poplar. He climbed the, to the top. The ogress stood at the foot of the tree and began to threaten it. You will never escape me because the winter wind will blow. You will fall and I will devour you. The spring wind will blow. You will fall and I will devour you. The summer wind will blow. You will fall and I will devour you. The autumn wind will blow. You will fall and I will devour you. Since then, every day, except when she hunted for food, she was relentless on the trunk of the tree which she gnawed with her sharp teeth to cut it. Terrified, the man implored, O oh, tree of my father and my mother, get bigger, get bigger. And just when it broke, the trunk returned to its original shape. Time passed, Tess and the man scanned the horizon in the hope of seeing someone who could help him. One day, he saw a flock of birds and shooted in his direction. Oh, you who fly so high, go tell my mother and father that I am in great danger. Migratory birds carried the message. 
armed horsemen of his tribe flew to his aid. They discovered the poplar. Fortunately, the ogre's was on the hand. The man quickly left his tree. After hanging, his burnous on a branch to suggest that he was still there. He mounted a horse and spun with his arsavios. On his return, the ogres, reassured by the burnous that floated on the treetop, continued his treats while gnawing at the trunk of the tree. Thus, the seasons followed one another and came the windy autumn. One morning, a tornado arose and the burnous hovered in the air before falling on a rock near the tree. I told you, you would fall, yelled the furious ogres. She threw herself on the burnous and bit him with such violence that all of her teeth broke on the rock. They say she died. As for the man, he lived in peace with his people.